welcome everybody to Sunday School for grades 3rd through 5th. I'm Sister Brianne and this is Apostolic Faith Church. I'm so happy that you're here with us today. We're going to start our lesson by reading the life application story. Let's get started. It had been a long time since Samuel's school had seen their beloved principal, Mr. Johnson. After being away for a long time due to an illness, he was finally returning to school. Every student wanted to be a part of welcoming him back. Samuel was chosen to read the welcome speech at the school assembly for the special occasion. Although Samuel had practiced, he was very nervous. The speech part was fine. It was the condition of the school he was more worried about. The temporary principal was a nice was very nice. However, he could not make decisions that needed to be made for the school, and this meant normal activities and clubs could not meet for most of the school year. This caused tension among the parents, the teachers, and the students, who were all very frustrated. Samuel wondered if Mr. Johnson would ever truly return to the school. He missed his leadership and kindness. Samuel hoped that Mr. Johnson would come in and set everything back the way it should be. When I think about Samuel and Mr. Johnson, I think about our upcoming Bible story that we're going to see in a few moments. Samuel is a student who knows how great things can be in his school because he's seen them before. He knows what kind of decisions and what kind of things are done with leadership to make his school the best it can be. Unfortunately, right now he's in a time where the people in charge can't exactly do things the right way. And so he's eager for his original principal to return to the school to set things right. Now, in our lesson today, we're gonna to hear about someone who was determined to be the one to set things the way that they should be. And we're gonna learn about someone, a prophet, um, Isaiah, who is the person who knows how good things can be, who knows how God wants things to go. I'm going to look for the similarities in a story with Samuel and Mr. Johnson in correlation to our Bible scriptures and our retelling of the Bible events, our biblical events found in the book of Isaiah. So let's get started with our um, key scripture and then we're going to go into our scripture reading our story reading now i also want to encourage you that if you don't have a bible you have a moment right now where you can go grab one r as you should be doing taking notes so that you can write down the scripture um what i call the scripture addresses the book of the bible and the chapter and the verse so that you can read it later on by yourself or with an adult but let's carry on our key verse for today will be found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 7. And this is how it reads in the King James Version. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice and from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And that's our key scripture. Now, as we go on to the additional scriptures for our lesson today, remember, I'd like for you to write down the addresses, meaning the chapter, the verse, and the book of the Bible that we're reading so that you can go back on your own and study either by yourself or with a trusted adult who's familiar with the text as well. All right. Those people lived in darkness but they will see a great light. They lived in a place as dark as death, but a great light will shine on them. God, you will make the nation grow and you will make the people happy. They will rejoice in your presence as they do at harvest time. It will be like the joy when people take their share of things they have won in a war. That will happen because you lift the heavy yoke off of their shoulder and take away their heavy burden. You will take away the rod that the enemy used to punish them, your people, as you did when you defeated Midian. Every boot that marched in battle and every uniform stained with blood will be destroyed and thrown into the fire. This will happen when the special child is born, God will give us a son who will be responsible for leading his people. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, 
powerful God, Father who lives forever, and Prince of Peace. And so what I'd like to do at this moment is reread to you his names, because when I originally read it, I read it in the easy read version. So I want to clarify by also saying it in the King James Version. And so his name will be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His power will grow and there will be peace without end. This will establish him as the king sitting on David's throne and ruling his kingdom. He will rule with goodness and justice forever and ever. The strong love that the Lord all-powerful has for his people will make this happen. So as we go more into our lesson, I'd like for you to know who was Isaiah? Well, firstly, Isaiah was a prophet from the Old Testament um, who ministered in the southern section of Judah. The second thing I'd like you to know is that he prophesied in the book of Isaiah about the coming Messiah. And so the coming Messiah is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then third, um, although Isaiah had very strong warnings about punishments, for wrongdoing because during his time, people were not listening and following the law um, and the rules that God set forth for his people in particular. And so he kept warning them that they would get in trouble if they didn't turn back to God. And so he's well known for that. However, it just so happens that the book of Isaiah is one of the longest books of encouragement in the Bible. So those are three things that I'd like for you to know about Isaiah. Now let's move on to the next part. One of the things that I like to do when I read the Bible is find words that I can look up in the dictionary because sometimes we think we know the definition of a word and really when we look it up, it may be kind of close to what we thought it was, but it always opens up a totally different understanding of what um, the word, the words in the Bible really mean when they're describing different things or explaining different things. So part of what I'd like for you to do when you read the Bible, um, especially this week as you study this word, I'd like for you to look up the words wonderful, counselor, mighty, everlasting, and peace. And think about what that means because this is what the Messiah is to us, meaning this is what Lord Jesus is for us in our lives. This is what we needed. This is what the people during um, the prophet Isaiah needed. And God promised that one day it would happen and it did. So look those words up and we're going to carry on to the next part of our life. All right. So in your personal study time, um, reading these scriptures, and hopefully even now as you listen to me, these are four of the questions that you should be able to answer from reading our text today are listening to me read our text today. Number one, what shall never end? Number two, how will it happen? Number three, who is his ancestor? And four, what kind of government will Christ establish? So go back to our reading. Some of these can be answered actually in our key scripture for today. Um, go back in and see if you can answer those questions. So as we wrap up our lesson, I've got a question for you. Well, actually, I've got more than one. The first one is, do you own a Bible? And the second one is, what are you going to do if you receive Christmas money or a gift card this year? I've got a really good idea for you. How about this year? You go ahead and ask a trusted adult if they could accompany you to a store or help you find a Bible online that you could purchase all for yourself. That would be a wonderful way to enhance Sunday school lessons with me and all of your wonderful teachers. That way, you can have your very own book, whether it be a children's version, an easy read version, a student version, or even a picture version, if that would be more easy for you. They even have comic book Bibles, but whatever your choice, I think that that would be a wonderful, a wonderful use of your Christmas money this year if you receive it. 
And also, don't worry, Bibles are not expensive. They range in price from $1 and up. So I'm sure there's something that you could find in your budget. That's just a suggestion. All right. So we're going to close out in prayer, but I want you to have a absolutely, positively, wonderfully blessed holiday. Lord Jesus, thank you for my students. Thank you for the opportunity to be before them again in Sunday school. I pray over them that they would have the peace of God in this season. I pray that you would look after them and that whatever the season takes them to, Lord God, that they can be content and happy knowing that you were brought to this earth. You were born for us and you love us so very much. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so before I close out, I know I said it was done, but I've just got one more little thing. Every single year for Christmas, I always find myself looking out of the window. The sky is always beautiful, whether there's clouds, whether the moon is shining bright, whether I see stars, it's dark blue, light blue, whatever the case, I always take the time to look out the window on Christmas. Sometimes I do it without even thinking. But by the time I'm done, I always think about the beautiful night sky on the day that Jesus was born. Now, I wasn't there, but I read descriptions and I'm always inspired to think about that. So on this beautiful night, whether it's Christmas Eve or Christmas evening, take the time to just go to the window and look out and see what kind of beautiful sky God created for you. Because when I do it, I'm reminded of the beautiful night sky that he created for the birth of Jesus. All right. Have a great week, you guys. See you next year.